What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to use machine learning to detect fake news articles using Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so for this video today, we're going to start by installing three external Python packages that we're going to need. And for that, we're going to open up the command line and we're going to type pip install. And the three packages are numpy, pandas and scikit-learn. And all three of those are part of the main Python data science slash machine learning stack. So NumPy is just for uh, efficient array processing. Pandas is for working with data sets and data frames. And scikit-learn is for the machine learning part for the traditional machine learning. We're not going to use deep learning in this video. So that will be enough. We don't need TensorFlow or PyTorch. Uh, you just install those packages. In my case, they're already installed, as you can see here. What you want to do after that is you want to download the data set that we're going to use for this video today. You will find a link in the description down below. It's the fake news data set from GitHub from this repository here. As I said, you will find a link in the description down below. When you are in that repository, you just click on the data directory and then you just download the CSV file here and you store it in the directory that you're going to be working in. Now I'm going to use for this video a Jupyter Notebook or an IPython Notebook in JupyterLab. If you want to also use JupyterLab or Jupyter Notebooks and you have some trouble setting everything up, you can find two videos on my channel, one about Jupyter Notebooks and one about JupyterLab uh, as an environment. And I show you there how to set it up and how to use it. Uh, but you can of course also just choose to work with an ordinary Python file. You don't have to use a notebook. So I'm going to start a new one here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, and we're going to start with the imports. I'm going to import numpy as np. I'm going to import pandas as pd. And then we're going to import from scikit-learn. So from sklearn dot model selection, the train test split. Now the idea behind the train test split is you have the full data set, you split it into 80% uh, training data, 20% testing data. So the model is trained on 80% of the data. And then in order to evaluate it to see how well it performs, how uh, good it is at classifying fake news, you just evaluate it on unseen data on data, it has never seen the testing set to 20% it has never seen. That's the basic idea. So this is what we're going to do here. Then we're going to also say from sklearn dot feature extraction, we're going to import tf i d f vectorizer. Is it vectorizer or vectorization? Let me just see. We forgot one thing. It's feature extraction dot text. From there, we need to import this vectorizer here. The basic idea behind this vectorizer is um, we want to take the text and turn it into something that we can feed into a machine learning model. We cannot just take the full article and just blow it into a random forest classifier and say, okay, tell me if this is fake news or not. We need to have something that can be represented using numbers because machine learning models work mathematically and we cannot just take words or sentences and calculate something based on those. We have to somehow represent them as numerical features. And what this vectorizer does essentially is it takes two metrics, it has a TF metric and the IDF. So basically, it's written, if you don't import it here in Python, it's TF dash IDF. And this stands for term frequency. And uh, what was the IDF, I think inverse, was it inverse, inverse document frequency. So basically, without getting too much into the detail, the TF is just a number of times a term appears in a document and the inverse document frequency is um, a metric that is calculated with the logarithm and a division, you basically uh, divide the number, uh, the number of times a, uh, no, the, the number of documents divided by the number of documents that contain the term. And then basically, the whole thing is you multiply those two metrics, and you get this uh, score where essentially to to describe it from a high level, high level perspective, that's not too mathematical is you want to know what the most important and most distinctive terms are in a document in an article. So you get an article, you count the terms, you compare them with the other documents with the other articles. And you then know, okay, this term is very special because it uses that specific word way more often than other articles. So that might be an indication for something. That's the basic idea here. Uh, I'm sure you can go more into the details of the mathematics here. But that's the basic idea. We vectorize the text uh, using this metric using this calculation here. Um, and then we're also going to import the actual model that we're going to use, we're going to say from sklearn 
dot and you can use multiple different classifiers here you can also try to go with a k neighbors classification but for text data usually what's very powerful is a linear support vector classifier so a linear support vector machine so we're going to just use here from svm the linear svc um, I also played around with a random forest classifier. It wasn't too bad, but this one produced by far the best results. Um, all right, so those are the imports. Let's now load the data set by saying data equals pd read underscore csv. And we're going to load here the fake or real news csv file. And then we can display it. And you can see here we have basically just four columns. We have the ID, we have the title, we have the text, the article text, and then a label. Is it fake or is it real? Now, since this is now text, we're going to encode this as a binary feature. This works um, quite simply by saying data fake. So is it a fake? Yes or no. Is going to be the label. And we're going to just apply a simple lambda expression. We're going to say that for each value in label, for each value x, we're going to say zero if x equals real and else it's going to be one. So now we have zeros and ones and we can then also drop data equals data drop. We can drop this label feature. Uh, actually, it doesn't make sense to drop it because we're not going to use the data frame itself. We're going to just use the text column. We're also not going to include the title because the accuracy that we're going to get is quite um, quite good, even without using the title. We're just going to take the article text. We're going to vectorize it. We're going to try to predict the fake feature. Um, and this is going to be our task. So what we want to do here is we want to say now the X data and the Y data is going to be data, text and data fake. So basically, the x data looks like this. And the y data looks like this. This is our target variable, very simple. Um, very simple task here, we just have one feature and one target, target value, target attribute. Now we want to do the train test split. So we say x underscore train equals or x underscore train, sorry, x underscore test y underscore train y underscore test equals train test split x, y, and we want to choose a test size of 20%, 20% because 20% of the data should be used for the evaluation, 80% of the data should be used for training. So we provide a test size of 0.2. I think that's also the default value. So I'm not sure if we need to provide it, but we're going to do it here. And now we have x train. This is also a random split. So it shuffles the data uh, and then splits it. But the length of the training data is now 5068 instances and the length of the test data is 1267. All right, so what we're going to do now before we feed all of this into our linear support vector classifier is we want to vectorize it because now as I already showed you here, the training data is just sentences, we want to have numbers. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say that we want to have a vectorizer which is going to be this TF IDF vectorizer with stop words being in English, since this is English text, max DF, we're going to set to 0.7. And then we're going to just take the X data and vectorize it. So the X train and the X test data, we're going to vectorize it, we're going to say X underscore train underscore vectorized equals vectorizer. And the first time we want to use fit transform, this is like scaling the data first, you use fit transform, then the vectorizer is fit and you only use transform on everything that comes after that. Uh, so we do fit transform x train. And then we do x test vectorized equals vectorizer dot transform x test like this. Uh, now it's done. I'm not sure if we can actually display this. I think not notice just a sparse matrix. But now we have the structure of uh, these metrics. So for each text, we now have uh, the vectorized uh, data. And now what we can do is we can just create a classifier by saying linear SVC, we're not going to provide any hyperparameters. Uh, we could of course do a grid search or a randomized search to get uh, the best hyperparameter settings to even uh, further improve performance, but we're going to just keep it like that. Now, uh, we're going to say CLF fit x train vectorized, and we don't need to, of course, vectorize the y variable or the y attribute. So we don't need to uh, vectorize the zeros and ones because those are not text data. So we can just use y 
train. It's already fitted. And now we can go ahead and say CLF score x test vectorized y test. And you can see we get a 94.79, so almost 95% accuracy on the testing set, meaning that from all these, um, from all these, how much was it? Y test from all these 1267 articles, 94.79% were classified correctly. Let's see how much that is. 0.9479. 1,200 were classified correctly from those 1,267. So 60, uh, 67 or probably 66, since we're almost here uh, at one, uh, were classified incorrectly. This is quite impressive for such a simple model like a linear support vector classifier, uh, but you can see it's quite powerful. Now, if you want to predict another article that's maybe not part of the data set, how would you do that? You would just take the article text, whatever it is, you can uh, put it into a text file. So for example, here, um, <clears throat> we're just going to use x test, I lock 10, for example, this is just one article, for example. And this is, of course, part of the data set, but you can just copy paste it from a website. What you do is you say now, with open, and then, um, my text dot txt in writing mode sf f dot write like this. So now I have this text file here. Will we have okay, it's not UDF eight encoded. Can I change this? You go. So now we have this text, you would just create a text file like this one where you have a bunch of text, then you would load it. Of course, you wouldn't write it because you would get it from the internet. So you read it, encoding UTF dash eight SF text equals F read. And then you have the text, this is just basic text. And now in order to get a prediction, you of course need to vectorize it. So you say vectorized text equals use the transformer that we already have or the vectorizer that we already have. So vectorizer dot transform text. What's the problem here? Uh, oh, I think we need to pass this as a collection. There you go. Uh, because here we also train, where was it here, we also vectorize a list of different um, documents. So here we also need to pass a collection, we vectorize it, and then we say CLF predict on this vectorized text. And then in this case, we get a one. Uh, I'm not sure if that's correct, but we can check by saying y test I lock 10. Yeah, it's actually fake news. So this is how you would do it. And you can also just load your own articles. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.